So a wonderful good morning, dear LinkedIn community and Composites launch members and Composites experts out there at Jack 2023. A fantastic opportunity for networking, technology, innovation, and of course, sustainability. I'm together here with Kai. Kai is the managing director and owner of AZL, which is a lightweighting design company working with computer added engineering and do a lot of simulations. Today we want to make a deep dive on hydrogen. Hydrogen is the go-to technology in the future because we will have on the one side electric cars and hydrogen powered fuel cell cars, trucks, maybe even planes. And today I want to talk with Kai about the possibilities, the features of hydrogen tanks. So now this is day two of Jack World 2023 and I'm on the booth, booth of AZL together with Kai Fischer, one of the managing directors of AZL in Aachen at the nice RWTH campus. First of all, Kai, how is it going so far on this expo? Yeah, it's, uh, it's great. So it's the second time after Corona that the expo exposition is taking place. And uh, already yesterday we were overwhelmed from the reactions here at uh, the booth and also seeing these inspiring talks all over the trade fair. So it's uh, really great to be here in Paris again. Yes, it's a paradise, dear community. If you are in the technical arena of aerospace, automotive, motorsport, you find all sorts of applications here. And today we want to make a deep dive with Kai, as I explained before, on hydrogen, because they made a hydrogen bursting test on a hydrogen tank. But before we come to the technicalities of hydrogen tanks, Kai, just explain our community what are hydrogen tanks for? Yeah. Yeah, so hydrogen tanks are known for quite uh, quite long time, but the pressure for decarbonization uh, in the mobility sector, for example, but also other sectors is uh, very much increasing. And unfortunately, this, uh, this has also been catalyzed by uh, the war in Ukraine and the shifting of the availability of uh, net natural gas. So uh, yeah, we see here a battery casing, for example. So e-mobility for decarbonizing uh, the automotive industry is currently the way to go. But uh, there are also a lot of uh, applications where where batteries get too heavy, for example, in buses, uh, in, uh, in trucks, or also in trains. And one way around is to use hydrogen as an energy source in these uh, applications. And therefore, hydrogen pressure vessels are a very, very attractive component for the composite industry, because most of them will be made from composites in the future. I've seen this morning a LinkedIn post about bursting test of a hydrogen tank. Can you explain us what you have done and why you have done this bursting test? Yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah, we also have uh, the part here, the, the bursted part. So this is always very exciting to do this burst uh, test because you put in a lot of energy into the composite. So the bursting test was only a small fraction of, uh, of the project, very exciting. So you put a lot of energy into this composite pressure vessel, but you need that uh, for the development of the component and the technology behind that we developed. So you have really concept and designed the whole system of the hydrogen tank. What is the innovation here in this hydrogen tank? Understand you have a pro priority process established. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. Together with our par uh, partner Aramco, uh, we were working on increasing the efficiency in production of these hydrogen tanks. So the, the tanks are very expensive because you put in a lot of carbon fiber material and it's a quite long lasting production process. And the innovation behind is that we can now speed up the winding process in this case to eight meter per second uh, for the winding and that increases uh, productivity. So it's very fast, the tech times are very short on producing those and that's important because one day the hydrogen tanks will be on mass production, right? 
Yeah, they are already on mass production, but if we see uh, the development uh, for, for the tank markets, that can be in a significant range, uh, like we see in the carbon fiber consumption for the wind, for the aerospace uh, industry today. So uh, today a lot of companies are active in this field and they are constantly ramping up their production to meet the requirements and to uh, feed the needed number of tanks into the end user applications in the future. Wow. So the final question, as always is, this whole show is about sustainability. What sustainable features or uh, preconditions have you thought about when producing these hydrogen tanks? Yeah. Yeah, so you also see here in the back where we are talking, future sustainable mobility is of course very important for the composite industry. So we are serving these needs on uh, various levels in all our applications, sustainability and cost is always the lead uh, measure. And for the hydrogen tank, sustainability directly also relates to the cost because the costs are mostly determined by the composite material you put into the vessel. And by our technology, we can also get more effective in the material consumption. And less material, of course, needs less cost, but directly also more sustainability. So a resourceful production. So you take care of the resources and consider the, the lower amount of input raw materials in order to have still a safe production and a safe hydrogen tank. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So in these projects, we are carrying really from the concept development of the component, but also the production process to establishing the production technology. So in this case, with our partner Convility, we set up a new process, which is based on a very high intensity heating of the tow rack for the preheating so that we can achieve these uh, high winding speeds and we also then take care for the testing to characterize the influence of different uh, material process parameters on the performance of the part later on and we can also provide benchmarking studies so benchmarking the new technology to the state of the art and so have a direct comparison if the new technology offers advantages over the established ones. One final question Kai is uh, if, if I came to know a company that uh, really entertains and informs a community in lightweight technology it's with AZL you have this open house format where you invite 100 and over 100 people in your premises what, what's coming up next this year what are the plans in order to get the lightweight community together yeah, for us it's very important. So it's not uh, just of operating a community like uh, we, for example, have shown the infrastructure with the Open Day, Ilka, where you also joined uh, some weeks ago. Yeah, but the community for us is bringing stakeholders and experts in the markets and the technologies of composites together talking about the peak trends and the needs for the future and then to derive real action and implementing them into projects. The upcoming projects we will start uh, is on the one hand uh, dedicated to composites in aerospace. We will also kick off a joint partner project on analyzing the state of the art and thinking forward in the context of pressure vessels. We will also have a joint partner project where companies can join focus on buildings and infrastructure but not having a look at the holistic market. We did that uh, before but we see a strong trend for applying composites in renovation and of course increasing the energy efficiency of buildings. So this will also be a focus from projects starting now and which are open to join. So what is your final call to action, Kai, to the community? Yeah, the final call to action in the community is composites is so, such a fantastic material, but you always have to think out of the box. It's not taking a material and form it, it's about combining materials, it's in understanding uh, components, so I think that's what the composite community makes it out, that there's such a strong collaboration and um, as we see, for example, carbon fiber composites still rising also after some breakdown uh, in 2022 due to the limited numbers of automotive registrations and manufacturing. Also the other composites are a little bit under pressure but I'm pretty sure this will now with the harmonization of the value chains uh, definitely change. But if we want to be competitive, if we want to 
gain new applications like for example battery casings. We have to collaborate and that's great to see here at the JC how this flow of information between the complete value chain is happening. So this is one of the fascinating opportunities when you're walking through an exhibition like Jack World 2023 and one of your partners and customers has customers and their partners on the booth. May I introduce you? This is uh, Mr. Ahmed al Shayeb, Yeah. And he works for Rehau AG. Now you have to know that between Rehau, which is a small city or shall we say village, it's a city it's I a think. It's a town. It's a <laughs> town, yeah. And Bayreuth, where I live, there are merely 50 kilometers, so we are almost neighbors. And everyone knows, of course, Rehau AG. This is the, the huge consortium that is involved in plastics, in car components, polymer, solution. polymer solutions. And Ahmad, welcome to the AZL booth and uh, Thank thanks for giving us some insights. Thank you. So tell us what is your responsibility at Rehau? Thank you, it's nice to meet you here. You're uh, welcome. Uh, we are now maybe since one and a half years split it in uh, Rehau Industries, the mm -hmm. Rehau AG and Rehau That's Industries cool. and Rehau Automotive. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the technology uh, uh, department, I am responsible for the technology platform Composites. Mm -hmm. And uh, in our corporate uh, development department, we are trying to do some innovation and uh, development ideas for Rehau uh, actual products, but also for Rehau future products, mm -hmm. product solution, which we are utilizing the composite material uh, and the properties of such innovative materials for future solution. So that's wonderful. So Rehau AG is also very much into composites now. Yeah. You have, I assume, a few projects uh, going on with AZL. Yeah, we are in, in relation since many years with AZL. We are since around four to five years partner with AZL mm -hmm. and we are doing uh, common projects together with AZL but also with the other partners of mm -hmm. AZL. And we are very satisfied uh, because the type of cooperation, it covered not just the technical side mm -hmm. of development, but also the commercial and marked. Mm -hmm. Means that we are very happy to have some joining projects regarding the marked and technology study of the use of composite material in different types of application. How does this uh, project partnership work? Um, do you have onboarding calls with them? Do you uh, have briefings? How do they keep you updated? What's interesting by AZL model, which is make it a, a little bit unique, is that there is proactive mm -hmm. discussion between the partners and AZL. Mm -hmm. Mean that they involve the partners by uh, doing the projects together, but also writing the strategy for the future projects. And uh, for example, by annual meetings for the partner, which will be held in, in two weeks, yes. the partner are playing a role to, to plan for the future projects at HCDL. Which type of project, which type of future topics, and also type of application. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ahmad, and I wish you a great show. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.